So that was my offensive line note. My wide receiver note is something that I sent to you this week that I picked up somewhere on social media. Actually, I think it was... Anyway, maybe you sent it to me. No, I sent it to you. Anyway, so it was a cut-up of Big Ten Network analysts providing their breakout player in the Big Ten this year. Few of them said Cade McNamara, which... I found kind of curious. I don't think he needs to be a breakout player. He's no. already an established player. And by the way, he's not going to be a breakout player. Can I just say that right now? He is okay. not going to be a breakout player. So for him to be a breakout player, he would have to elevate from where he is to be like a Heisman finalist. And that he's not going to do that in the Iowa player. offense. He's so not he's doing not, that in the Iowa. No, he's an established player. He's not a breakout player. I don't consider that breakout player. But Howard Griffith cited Caleb Brown as yeah. the breakout player in the Big Ten. I would prefer someone other than Howard Griffith that, that stated that. And not that I don't have respect for Howard Griffith, but he doesn't. Is he right very much? Well, I've not been keeping track. but okay. Yeah, I mean. He's been at the network since day one. It's interesting that he would make that. Not that he's studying the Iowa depth chart, but it is interesting that that I just you know it's me if he's going to be as good as Howard Griffith expects him to be he, he's gonna have to be a starter we right? don't know if there was a lot of thought put behind that answer Correct. and he really or he just made that connection like we've talked about top 50 to 75 player in the nation coming out of like a top five wide receiver in the country coming out Ohio State okay he's going to Iowa they need wide receivers he must be able to play. Was he that high, Mark? Yes. Really? It's like number 75 in the country overall. Let me pull up his 247. I knew he was a four-star coming out of high school, but uh, you mind if I share this so people can see? Yeah. What I'm doing here? We've, we've done this before, but if, if Howard Griffith said it, let's worth revisiting. So uh, I don't want to become a, I don't want to become a subscriber to any of this nonsense. Oh, come on. What, you want me to become a subscriber, Mark? I never see that. What's going on here? I don't want to. I don't want to do this. Thank you. Okay, there you go. Okay, uh, recruiting profile. Yeah, third best uh, player in Illinois in the um, what class? Twenty two class. Thirteenth best wide receiver in the country and seventy ninth. I thought you said. What did you say? I thought you said he was higher as far as. I said seventy five. Seventy. Okay, you said seventy five. Gotcha. So yeah, I mean, and we know his. I mean, his offer list is well documented. He basically could have went anywhere: Michigan, uh, Notre Dame, Penn State, Ohio State, Bama. So you know, I, I doesn't mean he'll uh, does not mean he will translate into a star guy right away. And how will he fit into the the Iowa offense and how things are operated? I, I do think if there's anybody that that can make this thing work. It is the Cade McNamara thing because like as much as I want to convince myself that, and, and I think we all do, we, we'd like to be able to see, uh, admit that Brian is capable of calling a good game because we've seen him call good games in the past. But like at some point you just have to accept that. I think Brian is what he is right now. And it's going to take a while for him to become if you know, he may never be a great play caller. But I think what Cade brings experience-wise for Michigan is valuable enough. And when you pair that with some athleticism at receiver from a guy like Caleb Brown, no, it's it, they got a chance of, of doing some things they haven't done. And my, it just seems like Kirk trusts Cade. Not saying he doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't trust other people, but, you know, Kirk plays things close to the vest. We know that. Um, perhaps Cade gets him out of that mold. Cade's a different type of cat. He's a different type of leader. The way he carries himself, so much different. I had a conversation with somebody earlier today, and that's exactly what they said. It, nothing against Spencer Petrus and his leadership over the last three years. But Kate is a totally different type of leader. And I think that's what they need. They need, as long as Kirk is going to be here, they need a guy who's willing to kind of put himself out there and be a little different. I know, Nate's, you know Nate Stanley fit the Kirk Ferentz mold. Spencer Petrus fit the Kirk Ferentz mold. Jake Rudock fit the Kirk Ferentz mold. You know, CJ with his long Goldilocks hair, maybe he was a little bit of a, a bad boy. He's also the only quarterback who's 
you know, come from Iowa and actually had success in the NFL, if that means anything. But I just think Cade's different in a number of regards, and I, I think that could pay dividends. Nathan Stanley could really sling it. He had a better arm than Cade McNamara. Now, that only... What does that mean? What, what does that mean when you say a better arm? What does that mean? I, like, people say he that all the time. throw the ball can... with more velocity. Okay. Throw so it further. He can throw it further, and he can throw it harder. What else? Well, I think... I, I don't know that he was more accurate. I, I would... The numbers would say he was not. Yeah, the numbers would say that he was not. But and the, I think the eye test would say he was not. field a lot more than Kate McNamara did. But uh, yeah, the numbers would say that he was not an accurate quarterback. But how many Iowa quarterbacks are accurate? It's I think recent quarterbacks. Some of the the ones when you got went back to Bethard and Rudock, then they were accurate so that leads me to believe that it is the quarterback not so much the offense although brian's only been in place now for six years but some of that's a byproduct of the offense of course and, the and let's remember like works together the, the criticism against cade has nothing to do with his accuracy i i don't i don't i have not heard no. a lot of michigan fans saying he's not, not an accurate all. quarterback they say maybe he doesn't have the biggest arm in the world he's yeah. not the most mobile but the dude can put the ball, he, you know, he, he's, I've compared him kind of to Jake Rudock, which is ironic because Jake Rudock ended up going to Michigan and having a pretty good year with them. But I think mobility wise, he's similar to what Jake was. And it appears on film that he's got a similar arm. Jake didn't have a huge arm, but Jake had a good enough arm. And people remember Jake lost the job, but he lost it to CJ Bethard because Bethard was going to transfer. And, you know, Jake ended up having a good career at Michigan. So um, I think Kate is exactly, I agree with Phil Steele. I think Kate is exactly what Iowa needed. And Mark, Phil's not the only guy who said that. Sure. There were a lot of people who said that. I said it, I, we said it, we said it before, yeah, well before he ever entered yeah. the portal. We said it during the season last year. Remember that? Yeah. They were like, hey, if, if Kate's going to go somewhere, boy, pretty good spot to land. We both did. Yes. So we, not that others didn't, but yeah, going all the way back to the season, we're looking at a Big Ten championship quarterback who lost his job and another quality program within the conference that needed a pickup at quarterback. And I, I did find it amusing. Who was it last night that said on your show, one of your guys that comes on said something about how he thinks Hudson Card is going to be the third best quarterback in the Big Ten this year, which... You know, maybe he will end up being that. But as of right now, I don't know how in the world you could possibly rank Card ahead of several other guys, including the five. I would agree with you on the probably the five star guys, uh, at least Kyle McCord. I'd probably rank McCord ahead of uh, Hudson Card, but I'd certainly rank Cade McNamara ahead of Hudson Card. I enjoyed that back and forth just within that small window of time about the quarterback projections and rankings. Because I took a hit from a few different people. You may have been one of them ranking, highly ranking inexperienced quarterbacks. But I just find that if you're going to completely eliminate anybody that has no experience in college football, you're eliminating like a third of the players and saying I'm we cannot saying, rank them. I'm not saying anything about eliminating guys, Mark. What I'm saying is when I see Pro Football Focus put out a top five quarterback list that includes oh, three guys who really don't have much of any experience at the power five level over a guy who came from Michigan, who took them to a, a college football playoff. I just find that stupid. I just find it stupid. Uh, I, I, I understand your point, but put me in the stupid category. I'll take the Penn state quarterback and the Ohio state quarterback over the Iowa quarterback today. I'll take either one of them. And right I know now. that right now, Yes, right this second. <laughs> okay. All right. Absolutely. All right. If That's you said fine. we're going to play the 2023 season, Mark, and you can take either Drew Aller, Kyle McCord, or Cade McNamara, I'm not taking McNamara. I'm taking the other two. Now, is there, some both risk of them there? First? is there some risk involved? Absolutely, because they haven't proven it yet. However, I'm the same guy that said Bryce Young, I'm going to rank him as the best quarterback in the country. And he'd thrown five passes the year before that meant nothing. And what, let me tell you the Heisman trophy. Let me tell you something, Mark, who do you take at Iowa with the situation this year? Do you take 
Aller? That's a different question. Uh, no, it is a different question, but it's a valid question given our circumstances. Sure. You take Aller, McCord, or McNamara, and we know that those other two guys are five stars, but I think you take McNamara given the situation in Iowa. Uh, that's much more valid of an argument to make. Absolutely it is. Yes, because you need a steady hand there. He is what the doctor ordered for the yeah. situation for the period of time we're working with. Absolutely. <laughs> That's not what I'm arguing. Abs- I completely agree with that. But we're just taking generic team. This is your team. We're starting a team 2023. Which quarterback do you want? I want the other two. And, and by the way, a wide margin. The comment in the chat that Aller and, and McCord have more upside. Well, of course they have more upside. I'm not arguing that they don't. We're talking about taking them right now for the 2023 season. Um, and I, as true for, as, as freshmen, they're not, I guess they're not true freshmen, right? Is McCord, a, are they both redshirt freshmen? Yes. So as redshirt freshmen, I, I just, uh, yeah, like you said, there's risk involved there. They've both been on the field and thrown as the has, ball around. So was Tanner Mordecai. So is Tanner Mordecai. But like I said, the com- you can't compare Tanner Mordecai's Power 5 experience to Cade McNamara's. It's just apples no. to oranges. And by the way, the only re- we know this. We don't have to ha- rehash this over and over again. The only reason Cade McNamara lost the job at Michigan is because a five-star uh, J.J. McCarthy was ready to take over. That's the only reason he lost that job. Sure. Yeah, he didn't lose the job. Somebody else yes. won the job. Exactly. Now, Erica. Erica has brought up this player a number of times to to extend on Tanner Mordecai. What's your take on Tanner Mordecai? Is he going to be intercepted 100 times when we play him? Also, Barta is gone. Celebration time. Bye-bye. Well, first of all, I, I'm guessing that... Uh... I'm guessing that Eric is reading a little bit too far into one open practice back in the spring. Yeah. Because I, uh, it was well-documented that Tanner Mordecai threw, I think three picks in that one open scrimmage. If you look at his numbers and I, I'm, I'll be the first to say it's, it's totally different going from the American conference, the pass heavy SMU school to Wisconsin in the big 10 and going up against big 10 defenses. But you look at the numbers in his career uh, he's got a career touchdown to interception ratio of 76 to 23. He's got 23 interceptions all time. Uh, had a 33 to 10 ratio last year, 39 to 12 the year prior. So, I mean, you know, he's he's going into a different animal of a conference and with totally different competition level. I, I wouldn't read into the one, one showing too much. Sure. Uh, I'm right there with you. It's a huge step up, not just into the power five, but possibly the best defensive conference in college football. However, we will look at, and I don't know the answer to this yet, when he played power five teams last year or teams that are good enough to be power five teams, they went to Maryland. They lost this game in the last two or three minutes of the game. Really good game at Maryland. He went 29 of 54. Three touchdowns, two picks, 369 yards. Uh, TCU, 27 of 49, 55%, 372 through the air, two touchdowns, two picks. Central Florida, 28 for 45, 295, and an interception. Cincinnati, 15 of 25, 105, touchdown and an interception. I'll throw BYU in there, 27 of 37, 218, two touchdowns, one pick. Am I confusing? Wasn't there a game? Uh, what, what, what game am I missing? Is it Was it Houston game? It was, wasn't it? 380 yards for Mordecai that day, 54 yards rushing, had nine touchdown passes and zero picks. Against against a Houston team that ended up didn't Houston win a bowl game? Yes. Now that defense is terrible. Yeah, it was garbage. Right. Nine touchdowns. Nine touchdown game. passes, and that kid's it, with zero picks. So I mean, it, you know, it is a Houston's a power five team this year. They weren't yes. a power five team last year. They are a power five team this year. To do that, I don't care where you're at. That that is impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many did I Iowa went for seven? For the year. For the year. Yeah. <laughs> For the year. Offensive or is that passing only? That was passing. Okay. 
Yeah. Right. He didn't have seven offensive touchdowns the whole season. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'd have to go back, but I, I wouldn't have shocked. I would have probably just agreed with you if you had said it. Thank you for the question, Erica. We appreciate it. Yes, Tanner Mordecai will have to step up considerably, and there is much talk about um, Wisconsin trying to maybe fit a square peg in a round hole with the roster that's been built on run, 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 play action, uh, tight sets, and now wanting to space people out uh, and throw the ball downfield. Do they have the athletes on the outside? I know they brought some guys in from the portal, but yeah, I think they're too smart to try to transition this in one season. So the question is, can Luke Fickle and his staff coach that way? Because he really hasn't had he hasn't had to do this before, right? I mean, when he took over at Ohio State, he obviously had the athletes to do what he wanted to do, and for the most part, at Cincinnati, different, totally different level of football. You can get away with. Maybe you can get away with some of that stuff in the AAC. But you're right. If you're trying to run, if you're trying to spread teams out in the Big Ten with with a bunch of, you know, let's be like Iowa. It, it, it'd be like Iowa trying to spread teams out right now. Like, they don't have the athletes. They, they just don't. And I wouldn't have the confidence that Iowa could do it even with Brown and with Seth Anderson and those guys. Matt Rule talked about running the football and – different ways to do that he was asked about being committed to the run he said yes we will run the football and we want to run it between the tackles but that doesn't always mean that you line up in those types of formations to let people know we are ramming the ball down your throat he says we'll spread people out five wide receivers and and get those linebackers stretched out there on the perimeter and back people up and then we'll run it right off tackle By Matt the way, Rule Mark, was a great interview. Matt Rule was yeah. he was the most impressive guy there. I told you I was impressed with him. I was impressed with Fickle and and um what's his face from Purdue? PJ Walters. <laughs> what's that? I said PJ. <laughs> no, I was not impressed with I know you were impressed with me. Did you like him more that you saw him in this is probably the first time you ever saw him in person, wasn't it? It is. Was his head as shiny in person as it is on TV? I think PJ does everything possible to present himself well in public so who knows what the grooming regiment is i think it's pretty extensive little turtle wax doesn't hurt anything so here's what i'll say and i'm going to be coming out with my predictions i don't know when your official season predictions record predictions are coming out um i'm going to be publishing some content here over the next few days and i don't i can't tell you for sure when this is dropping but i can tell you and i kind of i kind of teased this a little last night i'm not going to announce who it is but I had the opportunity to talk with a star on the Iowa football team last night and recorded an interview, which will go live on the show uh, via podcast here in the coming days. And when I say a star, I mean a star on the 2023 Iowa football team and a very insightful interview, really exciting dialogue. I thought um, from a guy who has an opportunity to do really, really great things this year and beyond. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, but uh, stay tuned to my channel because we'll be publishing that here in the, in the coming days. Yes. From the Hawkeye, the storm is the place to be. If there's anyone listening to us right now uh, that is not subscribed from the Hawkeye of the storm should be subscribed here as well. And uh, please like the video on your way out. And also keep in mind that if it's better for you on occasion to listen to us, you can go to Spotify, Google, Apple, Anywhere else? Amazon. Yeah. All those. And go to from the Hawkeye of the Storm, and then you can catch our weekly uh, podcast here. Did you ever go back and listen to those those renderings? Yeah, I will do that. 